welcome to episode three of Chasing Carp UK. You join me on the banks of Trent View in Nottingham. We're here for 48 hours. It's Easter Sunday, the sun is shining, and we're going fishing. Let's get straight into the episode. Let's get us some fish. quick update uh, it's about four o'clock in the afternoon as you can see got a guest with me mrs chasing carp uk um yeah just a nice weekend away for easter um but yeah it's four o'clock now in the afternoon uh we've not really done much today it's just kind of been like get here get the bivvy up get everything sorted try and get the rods out yeah so it's been really quiet absolutely nothing at all no no beeps no nout no signs of any fish um so yeah we're kind of just chilling at the minute and just waiting to see what happens but yeah rods went out earlier on been out a couple of hours now uh like i said no signs of anything down here with john as well he's on the next peg uh, he's not had anything either there's a guy in the next peg beside us he's had one on a zig earlier but i think he lost it to be honest uh, so I've got two zigs out at the minute and I'm fishing a PVA bag on the bottom. Uh, I've been following the Facebook page over the last uh, over the last couple of weeks and it's picked up quite a bit to be honest, especially on the zigs. Uh, it's been doing pretty well on zigs so that's why I've got two zigs out and hopefully it gets something on that. But I think as we push on in the late afternoon I'm going to bring them all back in again. Uh, some PVA bags on all three, get them out for the night. Uh, the fish that have been coming out have been coming over the last couple of weeks have been coming out of distance to kind of like all in the, the middle bowl area um, so that's what we're aiming for later on that's where I'm fishing at the minute that's where I want to get the bags back out there um, and hopefully as we go into the night we can fingers crossed get a fish or two or three or ten but yeah that's the plan and then we'll just see what happens with the night. I'm gonna get some bait on, so starving. What about 14 sausage rolls? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's been a really nice day to be honest. Like the weather's been really good. Uh, sun's been out, it's been nice and warm. Been leading about a bit as well to try and find some spots. But to be honest, I don't think there's much weed out there. So, what's my? The ducks. Yeah. She's noticed the ducks. <laughs> they can bugger off. So yeah, plan. Fish at distance, uh, towards the middle ball area. Three PVA bags, get a little bit of bait in the boat as well. I think I might, I might do that. Um, I'm gonna take a marker rod out, and I'm gonna take it up, and then I'm gonna put three rods across the around the marker rod, and then bait over the top and then I'll reel the marker rod in so I'll leave it at that for now but when I bring them in and I get them back out I'll go through the rigs and what I'm doing um, and I'll show a little bit of that later on so for now unless we catch something in the next few hours I'll see you later on uh, hopefully <laughs> I'll see you later on guys
little trick guys for when you're wrapping up the PVA bags around your sticks. Don't forget, plastic bag. Because it only takes the ground to be a little tiny bit wet. And that little fella is all over the place. Yeah, I always carry a nice zip tie bag. PVA bag, straight in. Straight around the bank sticks. And then wrap your rod up. Can't go wrong. Just a quick look at what's going out tonight. Uh, we've got PVA bag. I know it's lazy, but PVA bag in the boat. Uh, up to 26, uh, wrapped up to 26 wraps. And then spot is just some 10 milli boilies, uh, some boily chrome. There's a couple of uh, two milli and four milli pellets in there. A couple of scoops of that in the boat. And we'll, uh, we'll boat that out. And then we'll, uh, we've got that on two rods. We've got a marker float out in the distance. So I know where I'm going to. I know people say, oh, use what's, use the markers in the distance, uh, the tree markers in the tree line. But um, I've got a marker rod out. I'm going to drop one rod just to the right of it. And then another rod just to the right of that. Uh, take the boat out, both of them PVA bags with um, some spod mix. And then uh, we'll see how it goes. I know I'll have uh, the PVA bag will be out there with the, obviously a little parcel of bait but I always like to just put one scoop or a scoop and a half in the boat as well just to make sure because I mean we're fishing in 20 foot of water it's just gonna as it's coming down it's gonna spread out a little bit so at least I know when I'm going in the night I've not just got my PVA bag there but I've also got a couple of scoops of freebies just spread out in a, in a wider area around around the rods I'm gonna fish them both tight up close and then we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Well, good evening guys. It is the evening on the first night. Just a quick update before we call it a night. Just had some tea, spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> Easiest thing to make on the bank. Um, just having a brew now. Rods are out, all sorted now for the night. So we're just chilling now, just enjoying the rest of the evening. It's not too cold, it's nice and, it's just nice and, uh, would you say like chilly? Mild. Mild, I was looking for the word. I was gonna say warm or, or chilly, but it's in between, isn't it? It's quite mild. Looks good for a fish though. It's nice and calm. I don't know if you can see, but wait there. Rods are out. Looks nice for a bite, that. Beautiful. Gotta get a fish tonight, man. Got to get one. I don't know who'll be out quicker, me or you. What when yeah. there's a fish? <laughs> yeah. So we've got the um, the Nash Titan Hide Camo Pro XL, and you can fit two bed chairs in. A bit of a snug, but they do go in, don't they? They're all yeah. right. She goes to the back side of the the tent, the bivy. Shouldn't have, I nearly said tent there? Jesus. Um, she goes to the back side of the bivy and I'm at the front, but she's normally straight out as soon as them alarm go out and she hears me running out the door, she's following behind. So half asleep. Half asleep, yeah. But, but yeah, you'll see Charlotte some more in the, uh, in the vlogs throughout the year. So you've got to come with us, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You like just getting outside, don't you, being out in the fresh air? Yeah, I enjoy a couple of days, but not the length of time you sometimes go. Yeah, I suppose it's a bit different for a woman, isn't it? Us men are just dirty beasts, so we can just go days without a wash on the bank. It's a bit different for women. I don't mind the three days, I think. That's yeah. maximum. I mean, that's the mostly I'll be doing this year, to be honest. Uh, it's like Friday, Saturday, maybe it's a Sunday at a stretch. 
three nights at most, usually 48 hours. Um, but yeah, that's that's uh, it's probably going to be my limit this year. Just try and get on as many of the day ticket waters. Old Mill, good shout. I spoke. I don't know if you've watched the last vlog. I spoke about going coming down here, and then I was umming and ah and about going back to Norton Disney, or whether to. Uh, come to Trent View. I wanted to leave Trent View a later on in the, uh, a little bit later on in spring, but I bit the bullet. Thought right, Sunday, Monday is available, bank holiday. I thought I'll just get myself out there and make a vlog at uh, Trent View. Well, I really like this place. Nice big, nice big pit. Um, I mean, it's normally not this quiet. Like I normally had a fish by now, but <laughs> so I'm getting a little bit worried, but. But no, there is a lot of angling pressure this weekend with it being bank holiday. It's been full Friday night, full Saturday night, uh, and it's full tonight as well, Sunday night. So, obviously with the bank holiday Monday, everyone's going to fish tonight and probably leave tomorrow. But we're here until Tuesday, aren't we? So, we've took Tuesday off work. So we're hoping tomorrow night's going to be a bit more of a chilled night and less pressure on the water. Might even up sticks and move somewhere else, to be honest. What? Up sticks. Pack down. <laughs> Pack away, move away. Um, yeah. So, we'll see how it is tonight. I mean, I'm in decent spot. So, I'm on peg 43 on the tree line. Uh, usually does some good fish, this. This peg. But they are right out. I mean, we, we've been sat just having some tea there. And we could just see like there's a couple of fish just jumping in like the far end in the far distance but they are really far out like between 26 to 30 wraps out right in the middle bit where no one can really fish to so but i've managed to boat myself out there so i should be all right so we'll just see what the night brings then and hopefully it'll a be PB. fish and maybe it's a new pb i but yeah hopefully so if we have anything through the night I'll, I'll update I'll get me camera woman I'll be out and mm -hmm. we'll do an update through the night but if not then I'll see you in the morning guys good morning guys very quiet like a sight apart from the rain absolutely hussed it down all night um, it's quite late morning now and it's still raining now. It's just stopped for a little bit there and then the, the clouds cleared and the sun shot through and then it started raining again. But yeah, very quiet light last night. Um, I've seen a little bit of uh, a bit of motion on the surface there. So I've got one zig out. I had one zig out through the night and I had two on the bottom through the night, but I'm gonna change all three rods over to zigs, I think, and I'm gonna fish zigs at three different depths because I'm using the uh, the adjustables it's the fox adjustable zig floats so I'm going to fish at three different depths on all three rods uh, definitely all day don't know about going in the night but definitely all day anyway and then uh, we'll see how we go with that but yeah really quiet I haven't really noticed anyone have anything through the night I'm a light sleeper, so if anything's going off, I usually hear it like. But um, it's like kind of a full turnaround again this morning. So everyone who was around us has packed up and left, and then all new people have come. It's a lot more busier than I thought it would be on a, a bank holiday Monday. I thought people would have been back at work tomorrow, so they wouldn't have bothered coming today, and it would have been a lot more quieter. But that's not the case but not to worry. So yeah, nothing through the night and I can see some signs on the surface though, so I'm hoping that changing over all three zigs is gonna help. But we'll find out. So, I'm gonna get these three hook links made up. Just using the, uh, the size 10 Fox zig and float hooks. Uh, three foot leader, cause you're not allowed more than three foot leader here. Normally I would fish uh, uh, a long leader at the depth I want, whether it's 12 foot, 14 foot. I don't really like using these these fox adjustable floats, but it's all you're allowed to use here. 
So I've got three of them. And I'm just using the uh, 15 pound Fox Zig and Floater leader. So I'm gonna get these three knocked up, get them cast out, set the three depths, and we'll go from there. Last day, last night. Let's see if we can get a fish on the bank. Catch up with you soon, guys. I'll put the last zig out now uh, just give you a quick look at what I'm doing so we've got the adjustable zig float on there uh, we've got a three foot leader on there uh, a little mainline zigger just on like a, a hair type rig on the hook and then what, what we do is we put a little bit of form in for people who aren't uh, familiar with these adjustable zigs there's a little slot in the bottom of the fox one where you can put a little bit of foam in and then hook your hook in and it kind of just keeps this, this bit tidy and stops it tangling when it's uh, flying through the air. Just going to whip that out now. Always check, make sure it's not tangled on the end. Just give you a little line of tug. And what we'll do, sometimes it's on windy days as well, you need to sink your line or else it'll bore round. If it starts boring round, when you're letting your line out for, to let your float up, it won't take into consideration that big bore of line out as well. So if you just take a couple of minutes just to kind of sink your line and, and just let it go true straight out to the float, it'll just make it a lot easier. So all I'm doing now is I'm, I'm not reeling any in, I'm not taking any out, I'm literally just rod tipping the water. I can see the, where the line is. And I'm just letting it sink. Just letting it sink down. Just take that bow out. Let the float come up a little bit on the other, uh, on the bottom where the, where the lead is. Take a little bit of that ball. There we go. When you look out in the distance, you'll be able to see where the two pieces of line will meet. So now there, I can feel it. And when I just tug the line, I can feel the lines, the float is down at the lead. Obviously, if you're fishing in deep weed, you've got to be careful with that. Um, so what I like to do is, just put this down here. Just mute that. What I like to do, if you've got bad eyesight like me, and you can't see the float come up when you're letting the line out, just a little tip. Just mute all them. Mute all them, because they'll just be beeping. Is if we just keep letting the line out. Wait two seconds. see it on the surface there you can see the floor it's starting to there we go so the floor's starting to take line now you'll know if um if you if you're tangled or your your float stuck because as you're feeling the line out it'll just go slack and you know when you've casted it you've you haven't let that much line out the lead hasn't hit the bottom so your float shouldn't be anywhere near the top anyway so as i'm coming out at a time 
So we're just releasing the line slowly and just letting it, letting the float come up from the lead, just letting it drift up, pull the line tight. If you pull it out too quick and there's a, a, an undercurrent or it's dead choppy or it's really windy day, you'll start to get that bow in your line again. So if you just let it out slowly, just give the float a chance to, to pull the, water th uh, the line through the water. I mean, we're fishing in 20 foot depth of water here, so it might take a little bit of time to get up. Just every time you pull it out, just keep letting it tighten back up again, just so you know that that floats pulling through so most of the time depending on what distance you're fishing at or whether you've got a pair of binoculars you'll be sat now while you're letting your line out you'll be sat watching the water and seeing just watching for that float come up so you know that you're on the surface but remember when the float comes up you've still got your three foot link that's already floating on the surface. Right, so this is my little tip for our, if you've got bad eyes like me. When you're pulling up, you know your float is going to hit the surface because your line, on that last, last pull, your line will just drop slack and just drop down on the surface of the water. And that's how you know your float is right up because there's, there's no more tension, there's, the float's not trying to go any further. So you, whether it's night time, you, it's, in, it's, it's really choppy or you just can't see the distance, I know that that float now, so if I wind down, back down a tiny bit until it tightens back up, which is there, I know that that float has just dropped just below the surface now. So now I've still got my three foot hook link. So what I tend to do is I, I always measure my zig hook links from my first eye down to my real seat here. So I know the distance from there to there is the same as the distance of my hook link. So all I'll do is I'll just pinch that, wind back down again. And now I know the zig is just below the surface and then you can set your depth from there. If you want to go one foot, two foot, three foot, ten foot, whatever. But I know at that, without having to look out there what anything's going on out there, I know that my floats just come below the surface and then from there, from my first eye down to my real seat, uh, my zig's just below the surface. So you can just set your depth from there. A lot of people who are familiar with zig fishing or using the adjustables already know this stuff, but for anyone who's a little bit unfamiliar, um, I never really tried to use the adjustables. It's a good little trick if you can't see what, where you are or you, you're a big cast and you can't see where you're fishing to, or like me, you've got bad eyes. So just a little, little trip, uh, tip for you. Hello guys, uh, quick update just as we're going into the night now, half past seven, uh, quiet day apart from the weather as you can see from earlier on, it's just been on and off, rain, wind, rain, sun, wind, rain, it's just hammering it down but we've had nothing all day, no beeps, no signs of any fish and then this evening there's just fish all over the place, just boshing right out in the middle bit. Let's see if I can show you there, look. So around this midsection here, just fish boshing all over the place. 
So, I've had the rods back in again. Didn't have any joy on the zigs. Had the zigs out earlier. Yeah, they've been out most of the day, to be honest. Haven't had any joy with the zigs at all. Um, with how choppy it's been, I was having a bit of trouble, to be honest, with the uh, getting loads of bow in the line. Um, so I left them out all day anyway, and then decided to bring them back in. Uh, put three heli rigs out with a, <coughs> like a, a Ronnie rig boom, three pop-ups on, a uh, load of bait in the boat, and I've literally just drove it out right out to the middle where I could see the um, the fish showing. So I put some PVA foam on the on the the hook link, and I've set the bead a little quite high just so when the weight the lead comes down, it'll kind of come down slowly and land on anything that's there if there's any low level weed or out like that it'll just should just sit on top of it and that's them out for the night so we're just chilling outside it's a little bit chilly like even though it looks dead sunny but sun's going down now a little bit chilly there's a, a wifey she hasn't moved out that bivy all yes, day yes i have <laughs> <laughs> We've got the little brolly up, there's a little porch because of the rain. I don't like sitting in there too much, I'd like to be outside. I didn't want to sit in the rain. But, oh, there's so many fish, man. See that one there, look? You, I don't think you'll be able to get it on the camera, but... I mean, it's a nice evening, like, it just keeps raining. Like, five minutes ago, I was hoying it down, and then it stopped, the sun comes out, and then within five minutes, it'll go again. It's a proper nice night, but... But yeah, nothing at the minute. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, John has not had an out either all day. We'll go around and see him. But he, has had no, he hasn't had any beeps or anything. He's just been sat entertaining the ducks. So. Yeah, he started packing some of his stuff away just in case it rains in the morning. But yeah. Hey guys. I think I'm not here because I haven't got a mic on. <laughs> no, I think it'll do. But yeah, there's John's rods all set up for the night. I mean, if you've never fished here before, they're not that bad, the swims, to be honest. Like, he's on swim, 42 there. But you've got plenty of room on a bit of a slope, but you can park your cars behind all, all of the swims. So you don't need any barrows. You've got plenty of room and it's a bit of wood chipped down. So they're not too bad. It swims to be honest. It is just a big massive pit. But it's really deep in the middle. Oh, Bobbin's going up there, Johnny. Fifteen to, fifteen to twenty foot in the middle. You've got a shallow end round the bend. Uh, that's usually that's what's that between three and six foot? Yeah. It's up and down a little bit, but it's really deep silt out there. We fished it last year, and the silt was up to our knees when we were in the water. Just watching his bobbins there. One. But I think that's going to be it for the night, unless um, yeah. unless we get a fish out through the night, and then I'll update. But other than that, I'll probably catch up with you in the morning, guys. guys as you can see we're all packed away and we're in the van and we're ready to leave brings us to the end of episode three and the end of the session really quiet night last night uh, i think there was just too much angling pressure on the lake with the bank holiday weekend it's been absolutely rammed all weekend um, and absolutely nothing at all like um so that's another blank from me but next session looking forward to that already probably in two weeks time be looking at going to not disney or even coming back here to be honest uh, for another go um did pretty well on trent view last year so i'm a little, little bit disappointed that i didn't come away with something today but but yeah we'll see how it goes on the next episode and uh 
we'll catch you in a few weeks if you haven't already please like subscribe and uh, follow the channel and follow my journey i'm chasing that uk pb catch you in a bit guys happy carbon